What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is my video editing setup for 2020. Quick announcement, check it out yo. Brand new camera. Check out the autofocus on that. So being stuck inside the house now for God, I don't even know how long, I've seriously lost count. It made me come to this weird, but really needed realization. I need to update my workspace. I work 100% virtual now, and I do all my video production in here. So I am legit in this room for like 16, 17 hours a day. So I wanted to redesign my entire video editing setup to make it a little bit more accommodating, just given how long I'm actually in here. So I spent all Memorial Day weekend overhauling this entire space, building furniture the full shebang, and now I have this really dope setup that I'm gonna share with you guys. Now everything I cover will be linked in the description down below in case you guys wanna snag any of this stuff up. And this is definitely one of those work in progress kind of things, so if you guys know of anything that would go perfect with this setup, let me know down in the comments. I definitely wanna check it out. Now before we get into the review, if you're into checking out the latest consumer tech products before you buy them, or if you're just a tech head like me, I make a video like this every single week. So make sure to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you can be the first to know when a new JSL review is out and you don't miss anything. Okay, first up, let's start with probably the two most important pieces of the setup, the desk and the chair. Both are from the company Autonomous and they were cool enough to send out both their smart home desk and their Airglow chart too for me to check out. And man, they both have been serious game changers in how I get my work done. Let's start with the Ergo chair first because this is the first actual real quote unquote nice chair I've ever had. You got both dedicated neck and additional lumbar support for your lower back. The seat cushion is thick and it's got that perfect not too soft but not too firm feel to it. And probably my favorite part of the design is that the back and neck rest is made out of a breathable and flexible mesh. So you stay cool in the chair even after sitting in it for a long time. And even aesthetically it has a really modern sleek look to it that I think looks great. But the main reason why the Ergo Chair 2 is so great is that you can adjust almost every component of this chair to fit perfectly with your dimensions. You can adjust the height, the arm positioning, it has this great tilt function that makes it way more comfortable when you're leaning in. You could even adjust the position of the seat itself. And the sheer amount of tilt you can get on this thing is kind of ridiculous. Once I took the time to dial it in, this chair has been so much better on my lower back and it seriously makes a huge difference when I'm editing for hours on end. Now, if you know anything about ergonomic chairs, one that has this amount of customization is usually really expensive, but the Ergo Chair 2 is only $349, which honestly is pretty reasonable. And if this chair has taught me anything, it's to never skimp out and get a cheap chair again because there is such a big difference. And I wish I invested earlier to save myself from the years of dreadful posture and the body aches. Now, as great as the chair could be, you still shouldn't sit in it for too long without getting up every now and then. That's where the Autonomous Smart Desk 2 comes in. Not only does it look incredible with this bamboo topper, this is a fully electronic sit-stand desk, my first, and man, it's awesome. First and foremost, the desk is really sturdy, and I'm really glad I went with this bamboo top. It gives off a very clean, minimal look that looks fantastic with the natural sunlight coming in from my window. And it's definitely a quality piece of wood here. It's not that cheap cardboard material that many other sit-stand desks out there use. It also comes with this control panel that's super simple. Just press the corresponding up and down buttons to move the desk in either direction. You'll see that it shows what height the desk is at as you make those adjustments. And once you find that perfect position and you don't want to lose it, just press down on the M button here until it starts flashing and you can assign any of the four memory positions available. This makes it super fast and easy to get that desk to that perfect position right away after you've been sitting for a while and to quickly return it once you've had a good stretch. The desk also comes with these pre-drilled holes and metal grommets for the cable management, as well as these nice cable zip ties with adhesive for the cables underneath the desk. It was simple to install and put together, and man, this desk is by far the nicest desk I've ever had, and it's so great being able to comfortably transition between sitting and standing, especially when I'm in here for extended periods of time. The Smart Desk 2 from Autonomous is also only $379, which again is really reasonable for a fully electronic sit-stand desk of this quality. Think of it as a long-term investment that your body will be very thankful for in the long run. Now one more quick thing on cable management. Because Autonomous gives those great cable ties to keep any cables from hanging down, I picked up this cable organizer tray on Amazon to keep that cable discipline going. Super straightforward, you drill it onto the back of your desk, and it keeps all your cables consolidated and off the floor. Also, the power strip that I have here powering virtually everything for this setup is the Nectech Surge Protector. Big shout out to Knoopsy for the recommendation on this one. He recently covered this in a desk setup he put together not long ago, and it sold me right away. 
One of the best things about this power strip is that the six available outlets can adjust positions. Because let's face it, we've all been there when that one fat power brick takes up like three outlets and it drives you nuts. The Night Tech allows you to avoid that heartburn, and it's really well made. It comes with two USB ports as well, and the main cable is super long so it's perfect for a sit-stand desk. And dude, if that wasn't enough, check this out. Is the main plug blocking the other outlet on the wall? No problem, because even this guy rotates. Boom, problem solved. It's pretty brilliant, and I never thought I could be this excited about a surge protector, but man, this thing is awesome. And it's only 22 bucks, which basically means this is the only power strip I'm gonna buy from now on. Now my main video editing computer for this setup is my trusty 5K iMac. It's seriously my workhorse and I still love it, especially with that stunning 5K display. But one of the biggest drawbacks of this computer is the lack of vertical height adjustment with the stand. In order to get the display to a more ergonomic eye level, I picked up this riser for the iMac from a company called Somdi. I mainly went with it because it has a near identical finish with the desk to give it that nicely integrated look, and it's also quite sturdy. It's a solid piece of bamboo that could comfortably hold up the iMac, and it gets the computer to that perfect eye level. And it really does make a difference when you're using the iMac for extended periods of time, as you will start to feel pain in your neck, back, and shoulders if you're looking down at your computer the whole time you're using it. Plus it provides this cubby where I can keep my peripherals under to keep my desk super clean, and I just love how it does its job, but in a way that visually complements the setup and doesn't interrupt anything. It's got stellar reviews on Amazon, and it's not too expensive, and I would definitely check it out if you have an iMac that isn't properly on a stand. This little guy can make a world of a difference. Okay, back to the peripherals real quick. I chose to go with the standard Apple Magic suite of peripherals for this setup, mainly because it's wireless and super clean with the white and stainless steel color combination. It complements the light bamboo very well, and I wanted to make it a point of having no visual cables running across the desk itself. I honestly really like the Magic Keyboard 2. It's comfortable to type on and battery life is crazy good, and I'm a heavy trackpad user more than I am a mouse user, so the super large Magic Trackpad 2 is my go-to for basically everything. If I do need a mouse, I have the Apple Magic Mouse as a backup. Nothing too special, but they all work very well and look perfect for the setup. Now another element that I wanted to be intentional about was accessibility. Another limitation with the iMac is that it has all of its I.O. on the back of the computer, which makes it really annoying to plug things into. One solution I've put in place is this hub by Seitachi that mounts onto the front of the iMac, and it gives me access to three USB ports and an SD card reader, which makes my life as a video editor way easier. But I wanted to have more USB ports at my disposal, so I picked up this really cool USB hub that actually installs in one of the holes in my desk. This is the Simpeak USB Desk Charger Hub, which gives me access to four 30 watt USB ports. It goes into either a 2 or 2.4 inch plastic grommet, which are the standard sizes that most desk manufacturers use for cable holes. And man, check this out! It lays perfectly flush with the desk. It almost looks as though it was pre-installed on it. This is super convenient when I need to plug something in like my phone or my camera while I'm getting work done. And I love how simple and clean it fits into the setup while adding a ton of functionality. It's only 23 bucks, and it also has a super high rating on Amazon. I totally understand why. Okay, next to that in the corner, I have the third generation Amazon Echo Smart Speaker. I have it in the charcoal color, it comes off super sleek, and it adds a little contrast to the overall lightness of the setup. It's powered by Dolby and can play 360 degree audio. Now the next step of this setup is to get everything connected to a smart hub for voice activation. So the Echo will serve a larger purpose in the near future, but it's still super convenient to have to check out my packages, weather, or play music for now. So the last area of this setup that I wanted to be super intentional about was the lighting. On the right side of the desk, I had the Philips Hue Go Light. It's a really simple portable light that has multiple different color settings and strengths. It's compatible with most smart voice assistants, and you can either choose one of the preset colors, or hold down the button on the back and go through all the colors and find the exact one that you're looking for. I like the clean design, it fits in well aesthetically, and it adds a bit of warmth to the overall setup. Next to that, I have this huge lamp from Ikea, I can't remember the name of it. I like the oversized dome spotlight design, and inside I have a very simple Bluetooth RGB LED light bulb that I can completely control with my phone. Again, I can change up the colors to set a different mood to the setup, and it's super easy to use. And the last light that I have, more as a way to add some personality to the setup, is the neon LED pineapple in the back. Super random, but I wanted to add something on the wall that had some pop and character, and I saw this pineapple on Amazon and I said, why not? It's powered via USB, and I like the retro neon vibe that it gives off. It's really cool to look at at night. Okay, that's about it for this setup. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it, it really helps me out. Let me know down in the comments what you think of it, and if you have any suggestions on what I could add or adjust to make it even better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.